Hi, I'm Ben Wilmore from Digital Mastery, and I want to share a concept that I call an edge mask. And this is how to isolate just the edge or transition area whenever you use the new masking features in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw to select the sky or the subject of your photograph. Oftentimes you make a radical adjustment to one of those two areas and right around the edge, that transition area either looks like it's glowing or there's something in there that you don't like. And so here's how you can isolate just the transition between either your subject or your sky and the rest of the image. You can do it in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. They have the same masking features. Here I have an image where there's an area here where there's a transition from the sky to the water. And to me, it looks rather dull. It, I'd like it to be brighter. And let's see what we can do about it. Well, I'm gonna go to the develop module. And in the develop module, I'm gonna head to that little icon for masking. Now this image has already had some masking done to it because there was some lens flare in this area and it's been dealt with. If I turn my masks off, you can see down here where it looks more green and there's a little hint of blue here. I'll turn that back on, but what I wanna deal with is this transition from the sky to the rest of the image. So what I'm going to do is create a new mask and I'm gonna tell it to select the sky. And it'll take it just a second to do so. And now I get this overlay. Now, if we want to see a better idea of what it really selected, then we want to get away from viewing this as a colored overlay. And I can change that by clicking on these three little dots. And I'm going to choose white on black. That'll make it look like a layer mask or a channel if we're in Photoshop. There we go. Now, do you see this transition area right here where it's got it partially selected? not fully selected. I want to get just that transition area uh, in a mask where we don't have the top area up here being white because I don't want to make a change to the main part of the sky. So how can I do it? Well, all I'm going to do is we've already selected the sky here. Now I'm going to subtract the sky. Now you'd think if this mask was the sky to begin with, now you'd think if this mask was the sky to begin with, then taking away the sky from the sky should give you nothing, but that's not the case. It would be the case if our mask was solid black and solid white, but it's not. Any place where we have shades of gray is where we're gonna end up with something. What's gonna happen is let's say there was an area in this mask that was 50% gray. That means whatever adjustment you would make would affect that area 50% of the way, 50% of the strength of the adjustment you're applying. Well, if that's what's in the mask to begin with, and I say take away the exact same stuff, it's not able to fully remove that part of the mask because what it's doing, what it's using to subtract is 50%. That means it's going to remove 50% of what was in that mask, leaving kind of half of what was there. We're going to end up with this edge mask that's a little lighter uh, in effectiveness, but it will be very useful. Let's take a look. So I'm coming in here and just say, hey, subtract my sky. And it'll take it a moment, but now look at what we have. There's that transition area. Now, because that had shades of gray in it, and it, we removed it with shades of gray as well, it gone to about half of the brightness we'd like it to be. So moving any of the sliders around that are in here are gonna be half as effective as you usually expect them to be. But I'm gonna change my overlay back to a color overlay so you can get a sense for the area we're working on. And then I wanted to brighten that. So I could either bring my exposure up or I can bring my whites up. Either one would effectively do it. And if you watch that transition zone now, I'll bring this up and bring it back down. You see right then that transition where I can brighten it. Now, that's not the only time. It could be that I select the sky in general because this sky here is a little bit too colorful for my eye. So I might come in here and say, create a new mask, select sky and just bring my saturation down. Well, you might find when you do that in the transition zone, it might have brought it down not enough. And that's again, when you can create an edge mask. I'm not gonna do it in this case, I'm gonna work on a different picture. Here's an image where I've 
have selected an area and adjusted it and that would be the subject of the photograph. I'll go to my mass. I have three of them in here. If I hover over the bottom most one, this is my wife Karen, by the way, and uh, here I've isolated her. I did that by using the select subject choice. Yeah, you can see that right down here. And then afterwards, I hit the subtract button over here and I told it to subtract using a mat or using a brush. And that's what this part is. And the only thing that was doing is subtracting her bathing suit and her dark hair because I wanted to make an adjustment that would make her skin look better. And so I dialed everything in. But after doing so, if I look really close at this image, I can see what looks like a slight bright halo right around this portion, the back side of her leg. I don't see it as much on the front, but in the back, it's kind of distracting. So I want to create an edge mask, which is going to give me just the edge that's there. Let's do it. I'm going to come up here and say I want a new mask, and I'm going to tell it to select my subject. Then right after it does that, I'm going to tell it to subtract my subject, which sounds counterintuitive. Sounds like you'd have nothing, but can you see that slight little green uh, rim around there? Or if you want to see it better, I'll come over here and make my mask appear as white on black. There it is. So now I'm going to uh, get out of this view. I was just showing you so you get an idea of what's selected. And now I can adjust the image. And I might just bring my whites down. That concentrates on the brightest portion of the image. And right about there, I no longer see that highlight in this area. And so I like that. Now, if for some reason I only needed it in this section, like if it didn't look good over here, well, then I can do that. Let's say it was only this very small section. Well, I just go to my mask, click on these three little dots and say intersect the mask we currently have with a brush. And what that means is we're going to work on the area we've already isolated and we're going to further limit it to only where I paint right now. I'm not going to use auto masks. I just want to do a generic kind of painting and I'm just going to come over here and paint it in right there on this edge. And by doing so, it's removing it from the opposite edge because we're only getting the area where I just painted. So if I come over here now and say, let's look at this as a black on white or a white on black, I should say, mask. I gotta choose show overlay, there we go. You notice it's only on this side. It's no longer on the other side of the leg. So this is a technique that I use anytime I've isolated the sky or the subject. I've made some sort of an adjustment to that area and I don't like the transition. Oftentimes it's a bright or dark kind of glow around that transition and I want to get rid of it. So I do an edge mask and an edge mask is simply telling it to select the sky and then remove the sky. What we have left is about a 50% strength um, mask of the areas that were gray in the original sky mask and then we can adjust it just know the adjustment sliders that you apply will be about half as effective as you're used to but most of the time i have to make rather subtle adjustments if you make a radical adjustment around an edge mask it's going to become too obvious because the edge mask often has some noise in it and other things that makes it look a little odd if you do uh, radical adjustments now, if you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop and Lightroom, then check out my website, mastersacademy.com. I'll see you next week.